Hello Ryan, it's great to speak with you. Could you please tell me a bit about how you became a research team leader and what your role entails? Uh, thank you, Hannah. Um, well, as research team leader at Cutting Edge Information, uh, I'll be responsible for um, selecting some of the topics that we're covering. Um, our research focuses on benchmarking uh, pharmaceutical management, um, key benchmarks on budgets and staffing, and uh, we cover a whole range of uh, functional areas within pharmaceutical industry. So um, as, uh, as a team leader, I'll be able to uh, kind of guide the direction of our research. How is the rise in digital technologies affecting pharma companies? Well, the rapid growth in the digital space is, is simply remarkable. I mean, I don't think that there's a single industry out there that can neglect digital marketing and, and really expect to succeed long term. So uh, pharma is certainly no exception. Um, while it may have taken them a little bit longer to figure out how to use uh, digital media, social media, um, they, they are really uh, taking the bull by the horns and they're making it a real focus of their total marketing effort. Um, our recent benchmarking study showed that uh, in 2009, uh, traditional media channels for pharma accounted for over 60% of their media mix, um, and that number has reversed uh, as soon as 2011. Mm -hmm. Now, digital marketing channels are representing around 60% of the overall media mix, so it's just become such a huge focus. What are some of the current digital trends you've noticed, both in the U.S. and globally? Um, I think that for the U.S. specifically, uh, pharma is really starting to fully digest uh, the FDA's guidance from December 2011. spoke on off-label communications, and the FDA was fairly uh, detailed with their suggestions on on how to handle, how to identify an unsolicited communication. But now it's, it's pharma's turn to react and to, to build the processes. And uh, it's a bit of a challenge uh, coordinating the community managers on social media websites uh, for pharma. If they identify an off-label um, communication, now the process is they have to transfer that over to the medical affairs department. And so they're working out the kinks. I think that's uh, one of the big trends here in the U.S. And I think that globally, you can't talk about digital marketing right now without talking about mobile marketing. Um, mm. That's the way the consumers are, are choosing to uh, take in media. That's how they want to consume media and um, – Again, all industries have to figure out the best way. Um, you know, two years ago, I, I couldn't look at a billboard without seeing a Q, QR code on there. Um, and Pharma is trying to figure out the best ways to, to bring that in. Um, and certainly app development. I mean, just a lot of trends here. It's a very exciting time to be in digital marketing. How can pharma companies use social media to better engage with patients? You know, um, I think that pharma is making a real effort to try to put patients at the center of their business models again. And I think um, the way they used to operate was a traditional or push marketing. Um, and that's a real one-way communication. It's, it's pharma putting their message out upon the world. And that's, again, that's not the way the digital consumer um, wants to be marketed to anymore. They want to have a little bit of a say, and mm -hmm. uh, they want a more two-way communication. Um, and I think that's where pharma has a real opportunity um, to ask questions, listen, and respond, and become a real resource for patients. Um, they're, they're searching all over the Internet to find out about health, um, to find health information, um, but pharma has a real opportunity to become a resource, to become a place where people can go and get reliable information about the medicines that they're using every single day. There are also many challenges associated with pharma implementing digital and social media strategies. So in your opinion, how can these challenges best be overcome? Hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, certainly, many high-level executives have been a little bit apprehensive to dive into the digital uh, marketing arena, mostly because uh, the the guidances were a little ambiguous, and they didn't want to, um, you know, feel the wrath of the FDA, uh, incur any fines unnecessarily. But they're starting to, to tiptoe in, and I think, um, I think that the advent of a, a dedicated digital marketing team, um, a group of individuals who has their fingers on the digital pulse and on what the current regulations are, um, is a is a great way to get the whole company uh, on the right page uh, as far as what to do when adverse events um, pop up on social media. When everyone in the company knows the same, knows the right way to handle a situation, um, it can put executives at ease. They can feel better um, that their their marketing is in in safe digital hands, and they don't have to worry about uh, you know incurring any fines. How can companies mitigate the risks when implementing digital marketing strategies? Well, training. Training is very important. Um, creating some kind of comprehensive training for people who are on the front lines of the digital marketing, uh, people like community managers. Um, they'll certainly need a, a different level of training than someone who uh, is designing Web, websites, there are certain things you can, you know, legally say on your website. Um, hmm. Just need to have comprehensive training programs in place and don't be afraid to get even ancillary marketing people involved. The more people know what to do when they see an adverse event, I think the company is better off. Are there any benefits to pharma companies outsourcing their digital marketing? Well, absolutely, absolutely. There are a growing number of boutique digital agencies that serve just marketing. As you know, pharma has a fairly unique set of regulations uh, as far as marketing is concerned. So if you're involved with an agency that um, is working with you know, other consumer brands like Coca-Cola and... Uh, Ford, for instance, they the same the same digital rules aren't going to apply. You you might need to find an agency that has, that specializes in pharma's unique circumstances, and um, these boutique agencies have very experienced uh, community managers. They're trained on dealing with adverse events. Um, executives can really rest assured. Knowing that their digital marketing hand, digital marketing uh, is in the hands of experts, and and also for for those companies who are a little nervous to enter the digital space or to enter social media specifically, um, uh, again these these agencies are are very experienced, and they can kind of serve as training wheels for the company to kind of see that it can be done, it can be done compliantly, and uh, I think pharma can learn a lot from working with uh, with vendors like that. And what do you think the future looks like for pharma and digital? I think it's bright. I think the future is definitely bright, but it's also a little uncertain. Um, I mean, pharma waited, you know, over two years um, for that, for that guidance on the FDA guidance on off-label communications, and it turned out that that was just a one in a series that they plan to come out. It was just the tip of the iceberg. So I think executives are going to continue to be a little cautious um, moving forward, um, but avenues like mobile marketing just provide such a great opportunity. Um, to connect with consumers who, who want information. They want good information, um, and that's what pharma companies have to offer. They've got the right answers about their products, they're experts on their products, and I think the, the sooner that we can get that communication started and, and, 
freely moving, the better pharma and uh, healthcare will be. Thank you for sharing your thoughts today, Ryan. All right. Thank you. That was great.